Welcome back. I'm glad you're still with us here on uh, Morning at NTV. We are now transitioning into our Kickstarter and discussion uh, for the day. We shall be looking at uh, Uganda's economic trajectory. Is it on course or is there a need for introspection in order to begin to define clearly some of uh, the fundamentals that might be grey? I have uh, with me a set of uh, uh, panelists who will be helping us answer and give insight to some of uh, the questions that we could be uh, grappling with. But before I do that, just a preamble. The economy is projected to expand by 6.0% in 2024 and 7.0% in 2025, buoyed by stronger regional growth as global supply chains normalize. The oil sector will continue ramping up investments in wells and pipelines, further underpinning growth and future exports. The budget for this financial year is the fifth and the last in the implementation of the third National Development Plan, or NDP. Three, it will also lay the foundation for implementation of government's strategy for expanding GDP from 50 billion US dollars in 2022-2023 to 500 billion by the year 2040. That is very, very ambitious. Despite a shift from uh, agriculture to services, Uganda's structural transformation remains incomplete. Agriculture's contribution to GDP has declined uh, from 53% in 1990 to 24% in 2022, yet seven out of every 10 Ugandans are still subsistence, subsistence farmers and working in low value added agricultural jobs with labor productivity rising a mere 26%. All these may, to the average mind, sound a little bit hazy, but we must make sense of it. On the program this morning, I have with me Honorable Hassan Chirumira, the MP for Katikamo South. Many thanks for joining us. Good morning, our viewers. From Katikamsa. I have uh, with me two Ezra Byakutangaza, an economist. Many thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you so much. Good morning to you and good morning to our viewers. Uh, great. Let me begin with the economist because we pretty much need to get ourselves in class often. Yes. Looking at the current state of affairs in the economy and uh, projections that were given by the finance ministry, especially during the budget reading, but even before that, a very, very positive outlook. We are looking at 6.0% economic growth expansion. Well, some might question that, others might claim this is uh, obligatory on the part of the finance ministry and uh, the economists and government to give us a sense of confidence in what is happening. But when the fundamentals are flawed, what is your take? Um, thank you so much, my brother. I think our macroeconomic status is still uh, stable. Mm. Uh, the growth as projected um, by the Ministry of Finance at the reading of the budget, um, I think is still on course. Of course, that is not to say all is well. We have to be reminded of uh, our debt burden, which is over 52% of GDP. Mm. And uh, the status of financing our budget, you remember at the reading again, uh, the ministry announced a, a, a growth, a, a budget of 72 trillion, a growth that uh, increased from about 58 trillion shillings. And around that time, uh, our leaders here, the, uh, the members of parliament, passed the anti-homosexual bill, which, of course, attracted a decline in, in, the, in the external uh, development partners' uh, support for financing the budget. And again, that has so much to, um, to do with how much our performance um, translates into livelihood livelihood transformation, uh, the budget implementation, and, and how much um, we align our, 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 our work plan as a, as a government, as a country, with the actual performance. Because the moment uh, financing is tampered with, mm -hmm. then you're sure that the work plan is not going to be met as, 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 as earlier uh, elaborated. But um, of course, how does it look like? our? Inflation rate is still 
under five the target of five percent mm -hmm. so if we have a single digit uh, inflation rate then we 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 are doing well so um of course there is a lot that speaks to the economy performance mm -hmm. when you talk about the youth unemployment levels that is something to worry about um as is there is not there has not been so much uh, statistics according to you boss uh, 41 percent of of young people who are actively looking for jobs are still unemployed. So, yes, again, the outlook, of course, is still promising as we gear up for the uh, oil production early next year as, uh, as uh, the Ministry of Energy and Finance are, are promising. According to statistics, I think 18, 18 trillion will be coming to our treasury Mm. So that means we will boost our, our domestic revenue and we will be able to offset, um, offset uh, our debt burden, which is uh, more than half of our budget. So we still have a pressing issue of setting off, settling our, our domestic, uh, our, our external debt, mm. tackling youth employment, and then making sure our 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 financing our 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 our, our budget is self self financed domestically is financed by the taxpayers and i think on that note again we are doing well on the front of um, the revenue mobilization mm. I, I just saw okay. um, ura announcing a, a a surplus of the target and and and, and an increase of 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 taxpayers mm -hmm. from 1.5 uh, trillion uh, people, million people from two years ago to about three million people. So, but again, that is not to say we are comfortable because mm -hmm. we have nine million potential taxpayers, potential taxpayers who uh, are not tapped. Who at are all. not who are who are not financing the economy. So, okay. I think we still have a lot to do as an economy. Okay, I we'll be you. we'll be delving a little bit deeper later into the how URA can continue to, of course, uh, dip its hand yeah. uh, to be able to get uh, to those who are failing or avoiding or, well, are able to pay uh, taxes for that matter. But allow me to come to the Honorable MP with regard to 5.899 trillion Uganda shillings being released as part of the first quarter, that one, of course, represents uh, some very significant aspect when it comes to financing the governance programs that are being undertaken across the country uh, supported by URA surpassing the target. I think this is pretty much like uh, things happening the way they were supposed to or they were lined out to happen when the budget reading was uh, uh, done just over uh, two months ago. Uh -huh. Of course the government has that mentality of shading a picture mm. that looks so beautiful but deep inside, they know things are not well. Yeah. As of yesterday, the Minister of Finance, the Honorable Msas, has laid on the table a report mm. on the performance of our economy, including our, the state of our indebtedness and other, other issues like the gross domestic product issues that must be critically analyzed. Mm. Fortunately, the presiding officer referred that report to the Committee on National Economy, where I sit. So possibly in the next few weeks we are going to internalize it and look at what is the government saying, uh, whether the sub substantiality on, on, on within the report. But what I want Ugandans to appreciate is that economics is it varies from individual to individual we all look at it differently mm. there is that theoretical component of economics of our economics and then the practical component mm. of our economics and what worries me is that government dwells so much on the theoretical aspect mm. of economics they will tell you a lot of english uh, describe gdp gnp per capita income Toss around have, figures and statistics. But in reality, the economics of our people, of our people is alarming. If you go, if you walk around Kampala, for example, 
there's so many social economic issues that are impacting on the economics of our country. And we, if we do not address those issues, we are in a problem. My brother was talking about, uh, of course, the budget. I wanted to interject on that, the budget support that was cut. I, I want to defer from him. Uh, the international community or funders did not cut uh, uh, budget support because of uh, homosexuality or that anti-homosexuality bill we passed. I want to believe it was because of human rights abuse. And it is because of the continuous human rights abuse in our, in our country that is prevalent. Everyone can see this arrest, imprisonment of people and all that. No one is going to give money to Uganda. So I want to defer from him on record that the international community and funders from outside are anti-human rights abuse. And consequently, they had to cut the budget. And of course, and that's why revenue, rather the, the, the Uganda Revenue Authority came up with uh, drastic measures to collect revenues from people. I do not want to believe the figures they are giving us that we are now succeeding we are over uh, we are surpassing our targets what would you want to believe uh, because you have, uh, because again sufficient evidence of your own because collection. again again they want to shed an image that mm. everything is okay deep inside okay for argument sake mm. where are they collecting this money from our people in in our shops do you know how many shops that have closed as a result of revenue issues so really we need to contextualize things look at the economics of uganda practically where are we collecting taxes if if we still have companies that are on tax holidays mm. for so many years we do not know and now you are saying you are telling me that we are surpassing our targets the businesses that are supposed to pay taxes are actually not paying taxes. We all know that. I can enumerate them here one by one. Help now, the businesses, the businesses that are struggling mm. to exist are the ones that they are continuously milking to the extent that people can no longer breathe. And now the, the URI is coming to brag around that we have surpassed our targets. Yet you are killing businesses down there. So I really don't know the, where the economics of this country is heading to. Of course, they are going to argue that uh, we are in the process of, uh, of our oil production. Uh, we are going to get a lot of monies. That is still cheap talk. We want to see results. The moment, if we are not yet there, we are anticipating. And the problem with anticipating, you do not know what the future provides. Economics for me, okay, it's okay to predict the future mm. because that is within economic projections view. and outlooks. I know yes, thing. but practically, <laughs> we need to be conversant with what is happening with our economy. If we are still grappling with increased unemployment in our economy, my, my, my brother here has spoken about youth unemployment. Walk around Kampala, people are looking for there's no jobs, there's no production, and the moment you do not have jobs. In the country, it means there is no income. And when there is no income, it means there is no expenditure. And when there is no expenditure, it means there is no production. And now that stagnates the economy. And that is practical economics, we all know. If you do not have income, you cannot spend, you cannot go to buy goods. If you cannot buy goods, the manufacturers will not produce goods. And now that stagnates the economy. And then you cannot come out and say, we are on a recovery. The economy is doing so well. Our people, our people, <laughs> our people are getting a lot of money. Where? Of course, we all know uh, you, we, we have parameters mm. of economic <coughs> growth, indicators, uh, things that we look on uh, to see, to share the picture. Let me, that, let me ask you just a, a quick one here. And, uh, very quickly. Uh, we have parameters that help people to show economic growth. Mm. One of them is the per capita income. Per capita income. I want to task the Minister of Finance to give, to give us correct figures of the per capita income of Uganda. You are going to find out that <laughs> a common Ugandan survive on less than a dollar. All right. Let me just make this very clear. When you say or challenge the Ministry of Finance to provide us with what you say are the right figures. It means either there is somebody who is massaging or cooking 
the figures that you're giving us, and that is the onus now falls on you. Have you done a comprehensive survey so that you can counter the figures and the stats that are provided by URA, Ministry of Finance, and government for that matter? Because it would offer us a very clear picture if URA and uh, Ministry of Finance says, this is where we are, Hassan, uh, the MP for Katikamu South, has a whole lot of figures also that he's been able to come up with, and then you can quickly counter that. Is I'm, that? I'm a Ugandan and the representative of the people of Katikamu South. Okay. I know the levels of unemployment in my constituents, mm. and that is not any different from any other constituents. The biggest problem we have here in Uganda, there's a big income gap between the rich and the poor. And every time they look at per capita income, they are going to divide it on average. Of course, it's, they divide the total income divided by the population of the country. That's right. Now, that is going to give you false, uh, false figures in reality. It means that they are counting on me figures of a very rich person in Uganda, and yet I do not, yes, have, a do not have that. So that's why I was telling you that theoretically we can argue all that, mm. but practically the economics of Uganda, we need to come down on the drawing board and focus on the economics okay. of Uganda because maybe that, that is will take the country forward. Maybe the economist can yeah. quickly put this into frame for us so that we can have a whole look at the picture and make sense of it. If, for example, productivity levels across the country are not really meaningful enough to give us the figures that the finance ministry and URA project. What exactly is happening? What is the level of productivity? What are the sectors that are seemingly uh, working and which are those sectors that have been completely run down? Um, uh, thank you very much. Again, maybe my brother who is mm. a, a member of the National Economies Committee has uh, is privy to information or to more statistics than I am because for me... By the way, you sh Honourable, you <laughs> should be uh, conveniently quoting uh, the sources of the information that you have. You cannot continuously say they are giving us false figures when you cannot... Uh, yeah, but, but, but for a common Ugandan like yeah. me, who is an economist, uh, mm. economist and believes in the, uh, uh, in, the, in the institutional data, I will continue to, to believe what mm. I am provided. And also, of course, it doesn't mean I am not a Ugandan. Mm. In the, at the end of it that all, is what I want. at the end of it all, mm -hmm. uh, all of these statistics should make sense in the household livelihood. That's right. That, at the end of it all, he makes a point on uh, the income inequality levels. Of course, they have an impact on, uh, on us, yeah. and it also speaks to the uh, to the size of the informal sector that we have. The, uh, uh, many Ugandans, especially in the agriculture sector, you saw um, at the start of the PDM project, 39% mm. of Ugandans are still in the subsistence sector. So that speaks to how our uh, GDP per capita is calculated. I agree with him on the question of having the per cap uh, our total GDP divided by the population to get our per capita income. Of course, it, it, we, are, we are a growing economy. We would not, we will not pretend to, to imagine that we shall, we shall have statistics as good as those of, of, of those developed economies, especially on, 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 on matters like the, the, the GDP per capita. Mm. Because when we are still talking about 41% um, unemployment levels, of course that will explain that. Will explain um, how may be inaccurate the GDP per capita may be yeah. but even then it still sheds a picture on what the state of the economy is like uh, of course if the, the few have the resources there, there is employment in there the few have the resources there is an employment in there so in my view there is still a lot to be done especially in agri you, you mentioned the, the sectors that that need to be boosted yeah. At the start of, of, of this budget, of this financial year, there was an indication by the Ministry of Finance to Im increase investment in agro agro industry mm. sector. And I think that is an area, the, in, in the, 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 the agriculture sector contributes to, is the major foreign exchange earner mm. 
to our economy, it still employs over 70% of our people. So, if we are looking at sectors that can boost our GDP per, cap uh, uh, per capita and improve livelihoods in real sense, mm -hmm. agriculture is one of those. Talking about the services sector, which has to, of course, is one of the, the, the areas that the, 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 the budget was focusing on, this is also another area that many people, although in the, in the informal, in, 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 informally, are still involving in. Mm -hmm. I think it is important for us to look at those areas, um, increase uh, this regional integration and, and make sense of it, especially for, for, agriculture, uh, for, for the agriculture sector. Mm -hmm. To improve, um, our make a value addition on our agricultural products, supply these in, in, the, in the regional markets and actually have people make sense of these statistics. Otherwise, uh, our GDP per capita is not as good and, of course, uh, largely attributed to the income inequalities in the country. Yes. All right. I want us to help the average Ugandan understand exactly. Of course, they have the challenges and uh, going through uh, aspects including a failure to purchase the basic services and goods as they used to purchase them before and that could be the most adequate reminder and indicator for what is going on in the economy. But I also know the average worker today has issues. The average worker wants more money, the average worker wants more better working conditions, the average worker is looking out for things that the Kenyan worker is maybe uh, enjoying, the guy in South Africa, the guy in Nigeria, they could be asking for too much from an economy like Uganda, no doubt about it. But again, shouldn't they be, you know, looking out for better payment and uh, stuff like that? Honorable MP, the debates on so many of these factors, including a minimum wage, have been on uh, for a long time. And Uganda co seems not to understand how important that particular uh, aspect is to have a minimum wage so that no one earns below a certain amount of money because if we continue like this two people can do the same job but for totally different uh, you know rates and life goes on is it something that mps are anywhere near rectifying or we are comfortable as some of these pieces of legislation staying on the shelves uh, of course one of the biggest issues in growing economies is the issue of income inequality. Mm. You find high income earners and low income earners. And these people go to the same shops. The irony about economies mm. is that the rich and the poor buy things in the same shops. That's right. If you come to Uganda here, the policeman who is getting 400000 a month goes to the same shop to buy goods at the same price as someone who is getting over 10 millions and they are in the same economy so if you compare or if you look at the inequality within the incomes of our people that one alone is a problem mm -hmm. uh, the issue of uh, improving on the incomes of our people has been there of course so many on so many uh, on so many uh, cases we've seen that bill being presented in parliament uh, minimum wage but unfortunately for whatever reasons and I, I was here last time and I, I told you I want to start that debate of minimum wage in parliament mm. we want to find out why is the government so silent on implementing this law on, or enacting and implementing this law because it's what we need given the current inflation uh, the price, the increasing of prices of goods and services. I cannot, I cannot look at someone who is earning four hundred uh, thousand a month and tell him not to complain for increment, mm -hmm. because that four hundred thousand that police people get is bare minimum. We cannot even take their children to school. We, they take children to the same schools as other people. So the issues of our incomes need to be addressed. But again, you cannot pay if you do not have money. Mm -hmm. So for a government to pay, they have to be with money. And what are they doing to, to get money? Nothing. 
they are grappling on what to do. If you look at the investment uh, options the government is doing, the investment alternatives, they are investing money in sectors that are not productive. Then you start wondering where are we going to get money to increase people's salaries. We, we talked we, in the past when we were growing up, they used to tell us that uh, agriculture is the backbone of our economy. Mm. And rightly so, for so many years, our country survived on agriculture export of coffee was a big issue, it was a big hit, and we used to get a lot of money. And that this country was run on money from coffee. Right now, if you look at the investment of government in the agriculture sector, is minimal compared to other sectors. So they are investing money in sectors that are not productive towards increasing income for the country yeah. and forgetting to invest, to invest money where they are going to get good returns to investment. The other sector we are talking about is the tourism sector. If you look around the East African community, Rwanda for example, and you look at how much they are investing in tourism and the return to investment to their tourism sector, you envy them. Yeah. But in Uganda, we have better tourist attractions but we are not looking into that. We are not looking into tapping into income within the tourism sector. So we need to go back on the drawing board, realign our investment options, put money where return to investment is going to be effective so that we can be in position to pay people's salaries. As we speak now, we have teachers who are not paid for so many months working for government and now these teachers have to uh, take care of their families they have to take their children to schools and now you are going to come and tell ugandans ah our economy is running fine we do not have any problem it's sweet uh, as they always tell us never <laughs> never mr biakutangaza yes, hearing the honorable mp speak you see a sense of uh, a I don't know how to best describe it, but a resignation to the fact that there is no grand workable strategy that government can roll out in order to ensure that uh, there is an uptick in investments, especially in the private sector, to help the kind of uh, you know growth that it needs. It's one thing to wish, uh, and some of these things, and uh, when the wordings are released. Uh, to the populace, we hear so many good, you know, statements and stuff like that. But like he says, on the ground, there's a lot more that needs to, to be done. Employment alone can be achieved, but we have issues including how much pay and who gets the job and when they get the job. Many times I've heard of, for example, factories setting up and uh, people don't know that in that factory up to 70% of the workforce ought to be from the local area yes. that has these, you know, uh, this particular factory. Looking at that, is there any specific interventions that are being made by people who are on the outside in terms of economic policy to help inform policy makers with this insight? Do you know of any ongoing interventions or collaborations? No, um, of course, we will stick to what we know, mm. the government interventions that are ongoing um, to boost uh, this kind of elevation. Mm. We have for a long time have had uh, poverty elevation programs, mm. but the most recent ones being um, the, the Emyoga programs and the PDM programs. Of course, we can debate on what the, how effective they have been, how mm. effective these programs have been. Mm. But I want to, he, he made mention of uh, areas of, before I, I dwell deeper into mm. your, Maybe your, your I would direction. Maybe I would love you to hold your train of thought on that and uh, pin it down so that yes. we are able to begin from exactly where we are when we come back from uh, the break. The vagaries of time dictate that uh, I transition and then uh, we continue with uh, this discussion uh, straight after. So do stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching Morning at NTV. This is the Kickstarter. All right, thank you very much, uh, Stephen Mbide, for that interview. And, of course, uh, listening to the speaker there, Zahara Luirika, uh, speaking of uh, what looks like egoistical uh, leadership tendencies, the inability for a certain section of leaders to simply apologize for anything that they might have not done as they are expected to or done it the wrong way. To say sorry 
is a very powerful statement. Many times, if you are in a position where you think saying sorry disempowers you, you have a bit of a problem. Saying sorry is actually powerful because it helps rectify and level the ground for constructive deliberations and moving forward. Talking of moving forward, allow me to return to my panelists for the discussion where we are looking at how the economy has fared ever since the reading of the budget for the financial year 2024-2025. I have with me the economist Ezra Biakutangaza. I also have with me the MP for Katikamo South, Honorable Hassan Chirumira, and we've now been joined by uh, Honorable Faith Nakut, the Women Representative for NAPAC. Many thanks for joining us. You found us discussing aspects including alternative uh, uh, productive sectors where Ugandans can actually become more productive in order to help raise the much needed GDP for us to register the kind of transformation that uh, we need. It's a bit of back and forth here and there and uh, the economist Ezra Biakutangaza was uh, giving us an idea into how this can be achieved but maybe before he does continue in line with uh, good working ethic you're most welcome. Okay. What do you make of how the PSST that is Ramadan Gobi is uh, steering the ship when it comes to matters of the economy? Okay, in my personal view, I would think that the PSST is on top of the game in terms of managing the treasury, mm. managing the cash flow of this country, making sure that really says are made when there is adequate money or giving a provision mm -hmm. for emergencies. As, I've, as you've noticed in our country, there are things that will happen. There are emergencies. There are disasters that will happen at time T. So if the PSST doesn't manage our national cash flow well, there will be a serious crisis in our country. Looking at the performance of the e economy in this first day quarter of the financial year, as a member who sits in the Finance Committee mm. of Parliament, at least I am privy to the fact that the, in terms of performance of revenue in this first quarter, for the first two months, there are impressive results. And these impressive results uh, indicate that uh, in August, uh, in July and August, the first two months, mm. URA uh, exceeded its target. It exceeded its target. We hope that by the end of this quarter, this month, when the month, when the quarter ends, mm. then the target will have been exceeded already for the for the three months. For the first two months, it already exceeded. It is attributed to the fact that the traders willingly accepted to use IFRIS. So that the VAT, that as the leakages through VAT, we are now nipped. So I also wish to thank those traders who, who did not give you a, a headache, who, did, who really did not have to run to, <laughs> so that we have money to finance our budget. Mm. The budget for this year, as you are aware, part of it is financed by our revenue. Uh, part of it is financed through debt. Actually, a bigger portion. Mm. Bigger portion uh, is financed through debt. The 32 trillion through, re through revenue, if it continues, local revenue. yes, revenue mm. generated taxes and non tax revenue generated mm. from our country. Mm. If the rate of performance continues at, as it has been from the, for the first two months, mm. the URA received 4.5 trillion against their estimate of 4.4 in the two months. If it continues at that rate, we will be sure that we can take care of that estimate in our budget, mm. which we, we projected we would get to finance our, our budget. The other contributor to our budget is uh, the revenue from within, mm. 19 trillion from Ugandans who have their money. Mm. Yes. That's a big statement. Yes, there are there, 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 there are people who already invest in Uganda in our country mm. 
who, who are Ugandans, they have their money, they invest for uh, the government to, to spend on, on our budget. So the Ministry of Finance had planned that this year there would be a rollover of about 12 trillion, mm. a rollover so that it can continue financing up, then borrow new money. I have seen calls for, for money to, to be, for Ugandans to invest. The other balance is from external loans and grants mm. to make our 72 trillion budget. If all this, uh, these estimates work well, then we will be able to achieve what we set out to achieve this year. Okay. Now, there are things, I told you that there are things that just happen in our country which we must prepare for, otherwise it will make our economy collapse. That is? Like the disasters that struck us. This year we did not expect a flood, we did not expect a extreme weather. But you see, we have now to find money for, for repairing Karuma Bridge. There's a lot of money. We have to manage the Gitesi. We have to manage the many parts of the country are flooding. Our crop farmers, many of them have made losses. Mm. It directly affects the economy. Okay. When, when we, we have such kind of disasters, which we did not plan to see how to manage them, there, there can be a problem. <coughs> Coming to this point of um, what we should do more, I see opportunity in the tourism sector. Mm -hmm. We have to learn from our neighbors. We have to learn what, what, uh, how Tanzania is benefiting, how, how Rwanda is benefiting. I say, uh, until the Gen Z in Kenya rose to, to destroy their own things, but they were benefiting mm -hmm. from the tourism sector. Okay. So, so I think that's the untapped potential. We are not there yet. We're not there. there. We're not yet there. It could employ many people acting as tour guides, taking people, bring, it will also bring for That is down to coming up with a, a strategy that is comprehensive enough to accommodate all these sector players. But uh, let me just go to uh, Mr. Biaku Tangaza. Yeah. What I hear from the Honorable is cautious optimism when it comes to outlook and projections on how we can do better. But there is also what we've had on uh, a year to year basis. The tendency for us to look at many sectors with a lot of uh, positivity, but then again, the same talk comes up the next year. What is, okay, your submission on her insights, but most importantly also, Taco, the train of thought that you had driven earlier on alternative productive sectors for investment. Thank you, Chris. I think um, one thing Ugandans and all of us must understand is that the strength um, of an economy lies on the ability to, um, to domestically finance its expenditures. Mm. Um, as long as we still count on third parties to finance our expenditures, mm. we still have something to, uh, have a long way to, go. to worry about. Mm. Um, the, 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 the financial, the, the theme for this budget uh, was uh, fully monetizing the economy. And it set out a number of uh, projects, among which is uh, agro-business uh, uh, industrialization, uh, ac access to market and digitalization. Mm. Um, and, and lately we are, lo we are talking about the oil and energy investment. Mm -hmm. We are talking about um, expanding and broadening services. These are outrightly, for economies that have grown, industrialization has been a very significant factor. Mm -hmm. And in our case, in our Ugandan context, I think the effort to industrialize agriculture is one that would uh, would break a lot of um, uh, new ground. A, a, a lot of uh, poverty. Mm -hmm. We would get out of those poverty chains mm -hmm. if we actualized agro industrialization. Because uh, up to today, agriculture, I had you quote statistics of how declining. Um, uh, the declining statistics of, our contr of, of agricultural contribution to mm. GDP, which yeah. I agree with you, but largely... 53% in 1990. Yes. Uh, poultry, 24% in... Largely, largely is because we have not actualized the value addition, um, value addition um, 
attribute mm. that we need to concentrate on and, uh, and, and actualize it. Uh, agriculture is still our major uh, foreign exchange earner. So I think it is important that we actually, besides the, 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 the written, the theory that my brother here was talking about, we need to actualize it. Ag uh, industrialized agriculture because it, it still employs 70% of our people. So where are the gaps right now? Because when you st talk about that, you echo the president's uh, mantra on yes. just about all the occasions that yes. he uh, officiates. He talks about industrialization, industrialization. Is he speaking to blocked ears? Because I would suspect or rather expect that uh, this is a case of uh, people who are good to the gospel no i think i think i think um, i think we, we are not blocked mm. but the, the environment must be must be do you know that most uh, agri uh, people dealing in agriculture are still depending on nature mm. they are still depending on nature mm. we are not productive all, all all year through that's right so what 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 hasn't been done what hasn't been done is i think what the pdm is trying to do if managed well PDM. If the if 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 the PDM is industrializing if, agriculture. If, if the, if, of course, you see, you cannot industrialize agriculture without productivity. If we must, if we must industrialize, mm. then there must be surplus. surplus. There must be productivity at its peak. What the PDM is doing, you see, mm. we say we are we are. No, maybe you should be very clear, and I'll be coming to you very shortly on this. Yes. Maybe be clear at what point should industrialization take root. At a point when we have surplus production, at a point when we can produce, our, if we call ourselves like we are, we, we call ourselves, but we are also, <laughs> I agree that we are, we must produce all, all year round as agriculturalists. Okay. Then this can f fuel into the actual industrialization. But also, I want, before you go to him, I want to not to dwell so much on Mm. On, on, on only one, one attribute. We have the oil sector that is at the verge. Mm. It is, seems it is a hope for our country. Mm. That is if, again, it is well managed. I would love to we stay risk, away yes. from uh, the oil debate and how it is going to provide a windfall. Because at individual level, most of how we go through the things is how government operates. Yes. Many of us have uh, hoped for windfalls and things have turned out completely different. Sure. So I want to avoid the debate on how oil money is going to transform what particular sector of the economy, how we are going to be able to meet some of the needs. Let's leave the oil debate out and then look at the reality of the economy as is. And that will be very, very sustainable in how we approach it. You, 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 you see, the, the question, the question that, uh, that you're trying to dismiss, the question mm. of oil cannot mm. be dismissed it at this point. It can't be dismissed, because but let's not put too much hope on it. Yes, no, you see, <laughs> the reason agro-industrialization, for example, has mm. not kicked off like, you, like, like have been stressing to what we, we expect it. We don't have money. We, we don't have the money. And oil money will come in and, and change that. You know, it is going to the oil when the oil money comes. According to what we we, we see, the statistics we are reading, it is a boost to our domestic revenue. Yes, it is a big boost. And that 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 boost can contribute mm -hmm. to, to to can be invested. That's why I said, if well managed, mm. if invested, if invest a significant portion of it is invested in agro uh, agro industrialization, mm -hmm. then we, we we have we have hope. Of redeeming an economy. All right, no okay. doubt about that, Honourable. Are you hopeful? <laughs> you know, what is amazing is that some countries are actually running away from oil production and yeah. channeling their investment opportunities in other sectors. The case in point is Saudi Arabia, biggest exporter of oil. Mm. But right now, their focus is on tourism. And so with their vision 2030, they, they don't consider oil production as a lucrative business. But of course, for Uganda as a growing economy, we should focus on it. But put the, putting that aside, I want to believe that is not the biggest driver of our economy for now. Mm. We have the past, we have the present that we need to focus on to transform the economy of Uganda. He's 
spoken well about agriculture industrialization. For so many years, I don't know for whatever reasons, as government, we have failed to industrialize the agriculture sector. I want to inform you that there is production in Uganda. There is agricultural production. Our people are producing goods. If you go to Luweru now, in my constituents, for example, mm. we are farmers, pineapple farmers. Mm. They produce their goods and they lack market. People produce tomatoes. If you go to Wobley's Town Council now, these pineapples, they'll bring for you 10 of them and tell you this is for 10,000. That is a loss. If it goes to on the world That's market, a loss, yeah. I, bought, I once bought a pineapple in South Africa at a very expensive price. Mm -hmm. So now, our people produce the goods, but the biggest problem is that there's no market for their goods. Now, in the, in the previous uh, manifesto of the NRM government, they promised to construct an industry that adds value on the agricultural products in Luweru. Uh -huh. Up to now, it has never happened. Now, when a farmer invests money in agriculture and makes a loss because of lack of market, it's a disincentive for him to go back to produce. True. True. And that, it, it keeps on recycling. Now, when we talk about in, uh, industrialization of the agricultural sector, it must be done systematically in stages. We need to work on the market, go back and, and find and, out. And, 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 and at that point, the industrialization in stages is where we say the production, before you get into the first stage of actually industrializing, is making sure there's a constant supply of production, a uh, constant supply of the raw materials, which are the produce. Uh, yeah. The other uh, product. And I agree with that idea because right Honorable now. Trumira, let me just, okay. Right now, um, majority of um, oil processing factories mm. have closed in the country because the oil seed supply was not coming as expected. So we need to guarantee that there are things to be processed. Yes. Mm. Otherwise, we will have factories that are white elephants and the way we've had we've had fruit factories that are white elephants close out yes. no, 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 i'll tell you why i'll tell you why they are closing <laughs> out okay, you tell me. i'll tell you why they are closing out mm. using the coffee industry now the government wants to take over they are taking over things that belongs to the private sector you had a few weeks ago when the president called uh, uh, members on the National Committee Finance yeah. and Agriculture Obviously. and they want to rationalize uh, UCDA. Yes. A sector that has been doing so well for the people. Right now, coffee farmers it's are also crying yeah, for. It's also for government, so I don't know. Uh, it's a, no, it was, it, it was an act <laughs> established by an act of parliament. It's an independent <laughs> agency. It runs independently. Yes. <laughs> It's an arm of government, but independently. But now, putting it government. under the Ministry of Agriculture, you are taking away its powers to negotiate prices on the world market and all that. So basically, we, were, we are moving two steps forward and five steps backwards. So I think so what, horrible. what horrible. we have to focus on as a country is not what the government thinks. Like now, they are telling Ugandans that the biggest driver of our economy is PDM, Parish development model. I mean, how? Mass because, production. because yeah. if you, for in my in my parish where I come from, we have over three thousand people, and that is a very small number compared to Kampala. You give that one million, rather that hundred million to a parish of two thousand people, how is it going to transform production in that in that particular parish? So we need to be effective in our planning. I don't know what the national planning authority is doing, because. If we plan like this and then rush to implement mm. without critically analyzing the end game of what we are implementing, it is problematic. <coughs> All right, so now, we're convincing, out Ugandans, mm. convincing Ugandans mm. that the biggest driver of our economy now is the PDM, it's falsehood. So where does this leave the National Development Plan 3 that is being literally being phased out by this current year's budget? Do we see a new set of uh, plans that must be able to work uh, from within what the N NDP3 hasn't been able to achieve, Honorable 
Yes, the NDP4 is being finalized. Already finalized, yeah. Yes, mm. and the NDP4 is not beginning from a fresh <coughs> page. And the NDP4 takes into consideration the things that have not been uh, accomplished in NDP3. Mm. As at the end of last, last calendar year, the NDP3 had uh, achieved about 20%. 20%. Yes. So the other 80% is going to be rolled out, ro rolled over to NDP4. To, to NDP4. So okay. you're asking what NPA is doing? They are doing their part of the planning. So ideally, what, what's going to change in terms <laughs> of uh, what failed for NDP3 in NDP4? What is the magic bullet? What is being nudged to ensure that things work? Now, I think the consideration is the fact that the plans in NDP3 were actually good, except they were interfered with by uh, disasters, COVID, what, mm. so they could not be achieved. They could not be achieved. Eh? Yes. 80%. All right. That's of last year, but now it could be 40. <laughs> it could be 40. <laughs> I'm afraid, uh, lady and uh, gentlemen, uh, we are running out of time. It's uh, five minutes to the top of the hour. But before it's you close, been 80 is he said something. 30 seconds. He said two things which need to be qualified. That um, it's not good for government to interfere with the private sector. Mm. And at the same time, he said, that government should establish a fruit factory in his area. So when Ugandans demand that government should establish a, a factory in your area, you're actually inviting government to take charge of what the private sector should do. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Honorable Faith Nakut, woman MP, Napak, and Chris, uh, Gaza. Thank you so much. I'm afraid yeah. you're not going to wrap this up. Okay. Time is not our best ally. Honorable Hassan Shumira, many thanks for the submissions. Your insights have emboldened our understanding of what is not working, but also what is working in the very best way. We do hope that uh, the policymakers could uh, have a leaf or two and, of course, add to what is being done within the corridors of power. It's been a pleasure having your company here on Morning Attend TV this 18th day of uh, September 2024. I'll be catching you tomorrow on behalf of the team behind the scenes that ensures these two and a half hours are as exhaustively as they are. No doubt, have yourselves a lovely day.